Are you a psychic, sensitive, or seeker who wants to learn more? Welcome to The Mystic School with Sarah Wiseman, where we dive deep into all things mystic and metaphysical. Here's Sarah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Mystic School. And this is our last show of 2022 before we make our way into the new year. So i um, very excited today we're doing part, not the whole thing, but we're doing a little preview of my 2023 predictions for the new year, the divine astrology forecast for the new year. I've been doing this, I believe, since, I kind of feel like since 2012, maybe it's since 2014, but I started doing this quite some time ago. And it's been interesting to see, um, I just think it's been interesting to see how accurate it's these predictions have been. Um, I, I just, it's just fascinating to me to see what comes up and sometimes things come up that have just a slight mention that'll come back to be the whole story revealed the predictions for 2020. There was this line um, illness will be revealed. And then of course we had, we had uh, yeah we had COVID and there's been some other things like that so i'm always interested in sort of the cryptic nature of this forecast um, i channel the forecast which means i go into meditation i go into trance and then i channel in writing on my laptop and just allow it to come through for those of you guys i also do the monthly report but the annual report is pretty interesting because it gives a forecast or a trend or this flavor of the quality of time that we're facing for the year to come. Today is also Free Readings Tuesday, and you can call in. I see we've got a couple callers waiting, and we'll get to you guys uh, as soon as we do some of the forecast stuff, so just hang on the phone there. 888-298-5569, uh, 888-298-5569. Five five six nine for free readings Tuesday. So call in there if you'd like. And then um, for January, I've started doing something uh, a little different. So I've had these self study courses for a long time, and um, usually they've just been self study with no community involved. But I decided that uh, this this starting now, we're going to do these community events where. It's going to be a self-study course. It's just $22, but you're also going to get this um, rich community, private community to be involved with. And then we're going to have one um, live session, sort of a little mini webinar, a little soul gathering retreat. So if you're interested in being in our January session, which is almost sold out, it's the 33 Lessons January re Retreat and soul gathering, go to sarahwiseman.com. It's my favorite way to start to start the new year. Uh, we also have our waiting list going for Intuition University, which also starts in January, and that is the intensive direct training with me in spiritual intuition. All right, we'll go to the phones in a while, a little bit, but I wanna look at 2023, and this was interesting to me. And again, this is not the full forecast, Full forecast is going to uh, come into your inboxes January 1st, but it, overall it looks to be a good year, 2023, a year of surprising ease. And this does not mean it's going to be easy for every single person listening. It just means as a whole, as a collective, it's going to be easier than what we've been used to the last six years or so. Um, are you surprised by how you feel? They say, did you not expect to feel better, calmer, or more hopeful? For yes, this is a time of hope. A turning point has been reached due to the efforts of all souls on Gaia, that's all of us. The collective has experienced the extreme discomfort of accelerated awakening. But now in 2023, what lies before you is much better than what you expect. You've entered a new dimension and everything is different. There's no going back and who would want to? The future unfolds splendidly before you. 
Um, continues on, everything flows from consciousness. You are seeing what you could not see before. And so it's this idea of um, when we're asleep, when we're not awake, when we're not conscious, when we're moving from lower vibration or lower dimensionality, we can't see what a higher level of consciousness would bring to us. And so in raising our level of consciousness individually and collectively, suddenly new aspects are available to us. We couldn't see it before because we just weren't there yet. Any of you guys who have, have kids or adult kids and you're kind of like, um, you know, you'll understand it when you're, when you're 20, you'll understand it when you're 40, you'll understand it when you're 60, you know, whatever age you are, however younger they are. And it's like, you won't get it until you're there. And this is what this kind of means. Like everything flows from consciousness as we lift up the whole collective lifts up and this provides a radically different view from what we've had before. Um, remember, history does not repeat forever, referring to the past six years ish and before that. Once a level of awareness shifts, you do not repeat the same mistakes again. We say it would be difficult for things to go backward at this point. It would take a huge amount of effort to stop this momentum. Go forward in trust. You will be surprised how effortless this next passage is this next year to come. Everything feels different and is different because you, and they have a capital U, which means the collective you, are different. We bless you in this marvelous progression. So super hopeful. Um, there's quite a bit more. Again, you can sign up for this report at sarahwiseman.com and just go to um, sign up anywhere. <laughs> and you'll start to receive this in your inbox January 1st for the annual and then for the monthly report if you'd like those. I'm just going to read a quick rundown of the sort of bullet point trends that they mentioned. Um, 2023 is a numerology. It's a seven year, which speaks of ease, effortless, and the removal of all obstacles. Sort of a Ganesha year. Uh, so one, corruption. Then here's the this interesting wording, large contingents of spies, secret keepers, saboteurs, and fear mongers will be revealed and denounced. So who could that be? Like, you know, who, 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 who couldn't it be? There are so many choices. So um, this idea of revealed and denounced. So that's, you know, I guess we would say we can all sense that this is where it's going. I think I channeled these back in October. Um, so get, kind of getting ready for the new year, but I, I'm interesting these words, spies and saboteurs. We'll just see where that goes. Food, the collective loses its taste for processed food. How we eat changes within a decade, followed by meat. The collective loses its taste for meat. It's a practical thing, not moral, spiritual, or health-based. As a collective, you are ready to feed the world. So those two kind of go together, a vast change of how we uh, look at this shared resource of nourishing, not just, eat, not just ourselves, but the whole world. Climate changes, we know of this is going on, but here's this earth, wind, water, and fire hold consciousness. Let go of the misbelief of separation. Let go of this misbelief that it's, it's just the wind or it's just the water. It was like, let go of this misbelief belief of separation and you will find less agitation in the energy systems you live with. So it's sort of accepting the consciousness of these elemental natural forces, beginning to communicate with, beginning to ask as we might ask a plant or an animal or another person or our own bodies, what do you need? What do you need? Migration shuffles. This is again, we've been seeing this for a while. Climate ref refugees cross boundaries, mingle cultures and share new ideas. This is a good thing. Um, you know, this false nature of, of the boundaries of nation states. Um, gosh, we've been traveling around this globe 
or eons human beings have. We've been migrating here and there all the time. Um, this is not anything new. This is just a wave of change. Religion fades. I thought this was interesting because it feels like religion's pretty strong in a lot of places. Major religious institutions experience lassitude. The flock drifts away. Similarly, extremists hide. Extremist movements become more clandestine. Um, I don't know if this is good or bad to go into hiding, to be out in the open, but this idea of this more covered up version. Travel snafus, we've heard of that already. Um, current chaos eventually brings radical innovation, entirely new ways of traveling. So we'll hope to we'll see it says, but it's still, but in 2023, it's still chaos. Utilities disrupt. Power is not dependable. Grids go up and on. Work flexes. Back to office fails. Flex prevails. Workers unite. This was interesting too. Unionization under a new name, perhaps even as an app for gig and part-time workers, an app that unionizes. It's a really interesting idea. Schools decentralize. Mega schools are replaced with hybrid in-person and online education hubs, similar to libraries or community centers or Starbucks. You know, it's just like there's one on every corner. I've been seeing that for a while now. I'll just go real quick because I want to get to the phones. New inventions, flying cars, water purifiers, filtration masks, shoe soles, medical lasers are a few. Drugs repurpose. To everyone's surprise, new drugs for weight loss solve other problems. And actually, I would say and vice versa. Lasers heal. Patriarchy fizzles. We've been seeing that coming down. Patriarchy and old power systems are out. Coalitions and collaborations are in. Beyond video, hologram or Instacast, don't know what that means, Instacast, is coming sooner than we can imagine. Money shifts, stock market, banking, loans all change. Now, now you notice it didn't say crash or become a disaster, they change. We have a new perspective on how to work with money and wealth, and this would this would again go back to that food idea, like we're no longer concerned with how, what can I eat? What food do I have? It's like, how can we feed everyone with this new idea of wealth? What can I get? How can I get more? How can everybody have enough? This is this, this collective consciousness that's starting to lift. And then finally, Gen Z leads, and we've been waiting for these newer generations to come. Um, Really, you know, boomers have, <laughs> you know, kind of, kind of done what they could, and millennials came in with this wave, and now we've got Gen, Gen X, and then Gen Z, and finally with Gen Z, we've got this group of people who understand technology, who understand collaboration, and who are really open to this idea of consciousness in a way that uh, the other generations previously weren't. And of course, generations following will expand on this further. So it's an exciting year. Um, and I'm excited to see how things go, especially some of those more cryptic wordings. Anyway, again, if you want to get the full report, go to sarahweisman.com and you can sign up there. Alrighty, let us go to the phones. We've got times for some callers. We've got first up Gloria from Canada. Gloria, welcome. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Yes. What can I help you out with today? Uh, well, I've um, over the years I've done many of your courses, uh, which I really appreciated. It helped me so much to try to build on my um, intuitive, I guess, nature. I always mm -hmm. felt that I had. Um, from when I was young, but um, recently I was hit with like a shocker in my life, mm -hmm. 
And I'm not really sure how this was supposed to help my soul grow, so to speak. So I thought maybe I could call in and you could um, give me a little insight. I just kind of, you know, was um, hit with this um, complete change in my life and very shocking for me and others as well, but um, just didn't really see it coming. I don't think that I did anything like that. So, mm-hmm. so um, that was why I thought I could call in that you could help. I've always yeah. found, you know, your course is very helpful. So, um, so, um, so, so I am in this place or sort of part of my job is to hear what everybody's going through. And so it feels like the last few years have been like from not just you, not just me, because I've had my own shocking, horrible, traumatic events, not just others, but it feels like the level of personal trauma and like everything you thought you knew turned out to be not the way it was or everything you thought uh, just fell apart or fell away or things you thought you could count on turned out to be not that way. And this could be relationship, health, money, climate. It's just everything. And when I started to look at like how many people were experiencing this kind of stripping away of their core identity or their core security or their core belief system, I began to realize that like, there's something about the universe wanting us all, like a lot of people have passed, which is very sad. And this has brought a lot of change for all of us. But then the people that haven't passed, which is, those of us here now listening, we've also gone through this great grief and loss. Mm -hmm. And again, so it's all about getting you down to this place of stripping away all the identities, stripping away all the beliefs, so that you can have a crystal clear understanding of yourself as divine nature. And it feels very unfair that we have to get to this place through trauma. Um, And I don't have an answer for why it has to be that way. Like, why couldn't we get to that place through joy? But over and over and over with the people that come for readings or the people that email me, it's like, this is just where we're at right now. So... I think this next year is becoming easier and we're sort of able to like, look at like, well, what did this great big, the worst thing teach me? Um, For me, some of the worst things happened a year before last. So I've had about a year to process and some other people too. We're, We're sort of on the, on the, you know, we've sort of been processing for a while, but for you, it sounds like it's kind of fresh. So you just got to just, yeah, you just got to just keep trusting that it's there to help you grow, even if it seems like the meanest, most awful way to have to have to grow. But it's about letting go of those identities and beliefs and getting down to your true essence. Yeah, I don't know. I just felt like that's what we were doing. and <laughs> <laughs> Right. I know. I know. That's, I know. We you thought. Know, and then every, living everything right and doing everything right and not like yeah. just naturally, you know, not forced. Just everything was good. Well, and that's, that's dealing that's... with every, all the difficulties in the right way and then just to get slammed like that. Yeah. Well, Gloria, it's, yeah. And it's, it's kind of like doing everything right doesn't mean we're safe from life yeah. right that's yeah. and 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 kind of like as as some of us like who haven't been sick or haven't you know we haven't died from covid or or what whatever way all the violence in the world and 
and there's kind of feeling like, well, I escaped that, but then, then right. every something has come for every person. Every person has had something huge, all different. I don't think there's a person yeah. on the planet who hasn't had a big trauma the last few years. And so we're all coming through. We're like the walking wounded. Just what have we learned? We learned that we were all moving in the wrong direction. We all had a lot of beliefs that weren't real. So Gloria, why don't you email me? Um, why don't you email me if you want? And then this is feels like there's some things that uh, we don't want to say on the air, but um, feel free to email me if you want to go a little further on this. So because I can I, tell that I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, it's really rough. We've all had rough things. Um, let's go. We hopefully have time for a few more. Let's go with Donna from Tacoma. Donna, welcome. Hi, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, just in listening to your answer to her, I mean, I too have had a very tumultuous year. Um, I feel I've done a tremendous amount of growth and I came through the other side just when things are most difficult. I work my way to gratitude and that has made a huge difference in how I perceive and understand what I'm supposed to grow through. But mostly, mostly I was just calling if you if you sent anything for just a general reading because it's the end of a tough year and I feel yeah. like heading into a good year. So yeah. Yeah, I think um, gratitude is great if it works for you. And and if it's yeah. like for some people that's just not going to be something Enough, they yeah. can relate to. But I think for those who gratitude um, isn't working, you can just go with compassion. Um, yeah, for you, the general reading is like, you don't have to be happy. <laughs> you don't have to be grateful. You could just be um, treading water. And that's, that's good enough for this, this past time frame, treading water or just resting. You know, those, uh, when the ship wrecks and the sailor comes up on the beach gasping and the waves are crashing, that's good enough. Like we survived the shipwreck. So um don't you don't need to be um too happy if 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 that's not really like you don't have to force a feeling that's what i would my say mantra, too. my mantra is trust and patience <laughs> yeah trust and patience even when you don't feel like trusting and you don't feel very patient it's correct okay to yeah it's okay to feel feel that that's a hard task well donna i think you're doing really good regardless i think you have a good attitude but yeah just that idea like you don't have to be you don't have to grin and bear it you can just be with what is um i think i'll let you go i'm going to try and squeeze in a couple more callers but thank you thank for you calling for time yeah thank you all right we've got linda from santa monica and we're going to try and get one more we'll see how it goes linda what what's going on for you today hi hi nice, nice to talk to you well, you know, um, I would like to just mention a sort of the climactic ending of a 40-year friendship yeah. um, over, the, over the last few years, you know, that's been waning. And I'm feeling unsettled with it because this person is also not well. Mm. And it's probably not, I'm probably terminal at some point and just not feeling completely at ease yeah. in the situation. So what I'm getting for this, and I want to add, you know, we're all terminal, right? We're, <laughs> we're all terminal. So it's hard to know who, you know, even if someone has a terminal illness, somebody else may go first. I'm not saying that you're going to go first or any of that. I'm just saying to look at oh, it. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. It just uh, Yeah. But um, yeah. I think even with uh, this idea of closure is usually not possible, especially when we've known people for really, you know, a divorce or a friendship breakup, or it's, it's just like this idea of closure, it usually doesn't happen. And so stopping looking for that or stopping thinking that it can be fixed, um, that's one thing. And then... The other thing is sometimes people have to break away, like if this person is going to pass sooner than later, they may need to break away from you and to break away from 
many earthly connections just in order to do their soul journey to go to the next dimension. Um, so I would just, um, I would spend some time in meditation on this and just being with it without trying to change a thing right now. That's the advice I would give you for the next couple months. Just sit with it, let it be, feel all your feelings and know that even after 40 years, things can shift. People are changing and growing. Um, I'm going to let you go because I'm going to try and get Kristen. Yeah, I'm going to try and get Kristen from LA. I don't know if I'll have time, but we'll see. Kristen, welcome. Hi there. Hi, I only have a couple minutes. I was trying to squeeze you in, so go ahead. Thank you. Um, I am trying to switch from being such a downer and negative person <laughs> to being more positive. And um, I just I'm working hard at it, but I just, it's a lifelong pattern. And is there something I can do to kind of switch? Yeah, this is such a good question. So first, first off, I don't think you're especially negative. I think somebody might have labeled you that. I think you're actually very accurate in your um, psychic ability and your ability to read situations and your ability to kind of know how things are going to, going to turn out. And so looking at like, who gave you that label? Like, oh, she's negative. Just like, just, just figure out where in the, in the family um, told you that. And, uh, and then just start, when you start to feel negative, go deeply into it. Don't try and shift it. Just really look at like, why do I sense it's going to be this way um, without, so basically don't try and change it. Just examine it more deeply. And I think you'll find some surprising things. I think there's some beliefs that aren't even yours that are in your head and you can get rid of the beliefs and the, 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 everything will change of its own accord. Anyway, Kristen, thank you for calling in. I appreciate your time. Hey everybody. I will see you guys, uh, next year. And uh, looking forward to more of the mystic school. We're going to dive into all this stuff. Visit me at sarahweisman.com and sign up for our January retreat there. Thanks for listening. All right.